What is up guys? Welcome back to O'Neill Code. Today we're going to be taking a look at how Dijkstra's algorithm really works. So Dijkstra's algorithm is used to find the shortest path between nodes in a graph. It separates itself from something like breadth first search because it allows you to put a weight on the distances between the nodes. It is usually the base algorithm for many of the travel websites that need to find the most efficient path to a destination. It can also be found in things like cognitive science, artificial intelligence, and gaming development. But how does it work? Well, to begin, each node besides the origin is set to infinity. Since it's a greedy algorithm, it will always begin by looking at the shortest distance from the origin. It will calculate the distance from the origin to the next node and set the node to the shortest calculation. Once it hits the node you are targeting and confirms there's no other shorter paths, it will return the shortest distance. So let's look at an example and see how easy this really is. So let's start down here at A and work our way up to H through the graph, hitting all the vertices to find the smallest distance. We're going to record everything over here to the left in this grid. It has three columns, vertex, parent, and value. The vertex is going to have all the vertices, and we're going to mark each one off as visited as we go through. We have the parent column, which is going to hold the vertex before the current vertex in the path up to the H, the endpoint. So if we work our way through and E is the position before H, this way, E would be the parent of H. And then value. We make all of them infinity to begin, so we go through and we can always find a shorter distance than infinity. Now the first thing we're going to do is get rid of the infinity value for A because that's our starting point and make it a zero. Now we go through and find the shortest distance. So three is the smallest out of seven and eight. So we go up here to B, and we make A the parent, we get rid of infinity, and we make the new smallest value 3. Now we go 7 because it's smaller than 8, get rid of that, the parent of C is now A with a value of 7. And then we do the same thing with D. The parent of D is now A and the value is going to be 8. So there's nowhere else to go, so we can just mark it off as visited. We find the next smallest of the ones we've looked at already, looks like to be 3B, and we do the same thing. Now we're going to go 2 because it's smaller than 5 and 4, over to C. C already has a value of 7, so we try to see if the, this path is smaller. 3 plus 2 is 5, which means it is smaller. We get rid of the value inside there, and we now make this parent B with a value of 5. We do up here 4 to F. Parent of F is now B. The value is now 4 plus 3, 7. Lastly, B to E. The parent of E is now B. The new value is 5 plus 3, 8. There's nowhere else to go, so we can mark this off as visited. So we can just erase this because that's not the path. The new, now we find the next smallest, which is going to be 5, C. We go up here to G, the only place you can go. So G is going to be 5 plus 1, 6, with a parent of C, get rid of infinity, and just put 6 there. There's nowhere else to go, mark it as visited. The next smallest looks like G, 6. So we can't go down to D because the arrow is only pointing up, but we can go up here to H. So we do 6 plus 4 is 10. So G is the parent, get rid of infinity, and the new value is 10. There's nowhere else to go for G, and we mark it as visited. So H is our endpoint, and we found a distance, but we're not 100% sure it's the smallest, because we still have to check these three vertexes before. So let's keep going. F looks to be the smallest. F comes up here to H. It's going to be 7 plus 3 is 10, which matches what's already in there. And then we don't have to overwrite it because it's the same thing, and we just keep going. 
It is a valid track, but since we already have it, we don't need to record it. Mark it as visited because there's nowhere else to go. Now we can do D because it's the same as E. We just pick D. 8 plus 2 is 10, which is greater than G's current smallest, and we don't do anything. There's nowhere else to go, and we mark it as visited. We go to E. 8 plus 6 is 14, which is greater than the smallest distance for H. There's nowhere else to go, and we mark it as visited. Now we hit all the other vertices besides H, which means we found the smallest distance. It's going to be a 10. So now that we found that, what happens if we were only given this grid and we want to find a path to get back to A? Well, we just use the parent column. So H, the parent is G, so it means we're going H to G. Now we go to G, the parent is C, so we go down to C. From C we go to B, then we go B to A. There's nowhere, no parent for A, which means that's our starting position. And that is how you get back to the beginning. So if you were only given this grid and you need to find the path, just backtrace through the parent column. And there it is. That's Dijkstra's algorithm. All you have to do is find the shortest distance from the vertex. It's a greedy algorithm, so you always follow the shortest. And you go through all the way up, hitting the smallest distance to the end point. So there it is. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. If you liked the video, hit like. And if you want to see more from me, hit that subscribe button. Peace out.